you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? This is blasphemy. This is madness. This is a booth. Staring down, looking at the blood stained concrete. Hear the dead MC flying at my feet. It took a nine millimeter rhyme straight to your mind. Damn, my better split. This is my time, so I make my way up the block. Get to home base and lock that. Uh. Crack the Cavassier and grab the phone. Call one of my troops up. Hope the soldier's homie says, Yo, what's up? What's going on? Make it quick, cause I'm trying to get my stellar on. Nigga. Uh. Yo, girl, I'm in the. These lyrical assassins tried to pull a hit and then boom, came a noise from the other room. It was the boys in blue with the SWAT crew. They got us locked up for lyrical murder. It's one of them charges that you never heard of. It's the booth, the booth, the booth, the booth. Yeah, it's the booth, the booth, the booth. Yeah, we're killing all your podcasts like the HIV virus. You want to battle this kid? Huh, don't even try this. Back the uh. up, think again, count to ten. You want to grab that mic just to get done in? It's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, it's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, it's the booth. Was he African? African. African. No. He was American and he was like you. He looked just like you. He was Jewish. Just Wait, like okay. you. Jew. Okay. It's an odd crime for a Jew to yeah, commit. I'm pretty docile. Okay, so we have an African Jew wearing a hoodie. No, you don't. No. no, that's not what I said. Is that what you heard me say? I said he looked like you. Do you look like an African Jew? No, I look like a cock. Yeah. <sighs> he was Caucasian. All right, your boy says the one broadcasting live from the City of Champions. You are listening to The Booth. And the first thing I have to say is it's November 7th, Election Day, all over the country. So, you know what? This is the time where if you spent the last, well, since last September, if you spent all that time bitching and moaning about what's been going on in your city or town, and if you didn't vote at the last election, guess what? It's time to vote. Again, we're, we're you know we're one year from last year's uh, crazy presidential election. How, wow, how fast that flew by! And um, we are here today. A lot of local elections got some some big numbers uh, showing up at the polls. Hopefully today for some of these elections. I know Boston had a big election today. Uh, we had Tito Jackson taking on Marty Walsh. Uh, Marty Walsh has been there for that one that one term after Mayor Menino passed away. Um, so we're expecting to see some numbers from that. <clears throat> and here in Brockton, we have Jimmy Pereira taking on um, Br- um, Bill Carpenter. Oh, my God, I had a brain fart there, and I know the guy. <laughs> Bill, Bill Carpenter. And for somebody that was going to say Brian Carpenter, and I, I, my mind was elsewhere, but, but Bill Carpenter is running uh, for re-election. He's gonna, it would be his third term if he gets his re-election. Jimmy Pereira is a a young kid, 27 years old. Um, you know, a lot of people. He, you know, he's got a nice little political resume. Uh, but again, you know, a lot of the people that come out to vote are, you know, they're, you know, I've always said this before, the elderly. When it's when it's time to vote, it's one of the. And I hate to be mean, but it's true. The the, the worst days of driving on the road for elderly: Sundays, Christmas Eve for mass, and election day. Because <laughs> the elderly people come out to vote. One of the reasons why you will never ever see a law passed to retest people for driving at the age of 64 or higher, because nobody wants to commit that type of suicide um, as far as election goes. But uh, you have anything uh, important in your area today? Any, any, anything that you want to talk about for those who might be listening to you and your show area? <laughs> Nothing, uh, no big races down in Florida this particular election. Uh, we're gearing up for some big ones next year. Next so year? Uh, I, I've been watching the, the two big governor's races. There's a big congressional race in Utah uh, to replace um, Chaffetz. And, of course, there's a New York City mayor, but I don't think that's going to be as big a surprise to a lot of people. So mm-hmm. it's really, you know, the, it's funny how the talking heads already start 
talking about that. all. The, the, what's the cliche? All politics are local, and I think that's what we've been seeing in the elections ever since the big election a year ago. As you pointed out, it's been a year and a lot of people talking about things. You know, so we've seen a lot of polls where communities that are not satisfied with President Trump are still voting for Republicans or otherwise because, let's face it, Trump is not on. Oh. I lo- hold on, I lost Robert here. I'm going to see what's going on. He did, for some reason, his headset kicked out again. We're gonna, he's going to get his headset off. And um, I want to get him on because I know he was making a great point there. Rob, you back with us? Okay, yeah. Yeah, you, Okay. Well, I lost you because you were making a good point. You said you were talking about um, how local politics this time around has gotten somewhat important in some of the key districts because of the people who are upset with Trump. Well, that's right. And I think that uh, what you see is – when people are trying to understand the race of some of the special elections to fill congressional seats and some of the other races in various states, uh, you don't see a correlation between the polls, specifically about people's unfavorable views of the president's performance uh, in the year since the election, uh, and, and, and their votes in the local races, because they're separating the two things. Donald Trump is not on the ballot anywhere today mm-hmm. or throughout the past year since he won election. And so people are voting on their local interests. Who are the candidates? What are they going to do for them? Who's going to address the economic needs of the community? Who's going to address the other big priorities of the community? And this is not really a national referendum on the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. I think people don't like either one right now, and for good reason. So a lot of this is coming down to the local races and what's important in the community. So those of us watching from across the country aren't necessarily going to understand a lot of what's in these voters' minds, but I can tell you it's important to them, and it's the issues that are important in those local communities. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You make you make a great point um, about you know people getting involved. <clears throat> I just want to say something. I hope those who are getting them involved – are informed you know we don't want a lot of people out there tonight going out there and making knee-jerk decisions <clears throat> as we've seen last year there are a lot of people who did go out and they voted for trump and then six months in they were like wow i wasn't expecting that and it was like well how did you not expect this he ran his whole campaign exactly the way that this white house is today so for anyone to say, I never knew this was going to happen, look, you didn't, then obviously you weren't paying attention. So please, if you, if you still haven't gone out to vote yet, if you're going out to vote, please make sure you're informed. Um, my biggest thing is when you hear people say that they're heading to vote and they're still undecided. I mean, I've been involved with politics a long time. I'm, I'm always up on my politics. But the biggest gripe with me is people who are undecided just two or three days out from the polls. And I'm like, man, you should – you got to really know who you're voting for. Um, before election day, you can't be undecided heading in two to three days, especially if it's if it's a big vote like a presidential or something like today, such as like a mayor in Boston. You know, you shouldn't be heading to the polls in Boston undecided for a Tito Jackson or Marty Walsh. I mean, this is that that that's just crazy. Um, or you know, like here we've got the city council race. We've got Jacob Tagger, who we've had on this show, and you know, for the first time ever, I've come out and actually you know politically backed someone um only because i've known jacob for a long time i know the type of person he is the type of cloth he comes from so i came out and fully supported jacob you know in an in an open forum which is something that i usually never do but yeah i think everybody needs to be informed vote correctly make sure you vote who you're voting for and um we do have some major elections where some people have um have stepped down you have two people who announced one one gentleman, a senator, he had, he had announced um, a flake. He announced that he was retiring, but they, the rumor was was that he was going to lose that seat anyway. Is there, now if Ken was here, I would have asked Ken that. Is it was it the truth? Is that those numbers that he was probably going to lose that seat regardless anyway? Yeah, that's true because uh, Senator Flake was going to lose his primary race. And then there was also a concern that if he squeaked by the primary race, that he would actually lose the seat to a Democrat. And so the plan was to either force him out or to primary him for the Republicans to try to hold that seat Mm -hmm. Uh, because right now they have a a very slim majority in the Senate, although the the, the electoral map this coming year, uh, 2018, does not look good for Democrats because they have about two to one, if not more, seats up uh, for election than the Republicans do. So they're going to have to hold a lot of seats as well as pick up 
about three or four seats. So it's a really tough electoral map, but certainly neither party can afford to lose a seat that they have the ability to keep. So uh, the issue with Senator Flake is uh, he really was concerned about losing even in the primary. So the Republicans were scrambling to, to fix him. So the issue is now – uh, who wins the primary? Now that he backs out, does the governor or some more establishment-leaning Republican win that primary so that they can hold the seat against a, a Democrat? Or do they elect somebody who's more of a Trump uh, insurgent-style candidate uh, and therefore risk losing the seat to a Democrat, much in the way that happened in Delaware? Uh, where Chris Coombs, who I think has done a great job as a senator and I think is very popular in the state of Delaware right now, he wasn't expected to win, uh, but – the Republican congressman who was uh, heavily favored to win the primary lost to the woman who claimed she was a witch, if you remember that. Uh, yes, yep, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and so they lost that seat. That was supposed to be a Republican pickup. Mm -hmm. they, and, they, and they actually had a woman up here that ran that, that she was she was actually a Wiccan. Um, and she was, I want to say it was either New Hampshire or Vermont. Uh, there was a woman who ran that platform such as that. I got to give a shout out. We got a guy in the chat here, Bob Walker. Got to give him a shout out. Uh, thanks for listening to us and thanks for joining us in the chat. And we've got, we've got, uh, oh, hold on. I had someone who I thought wasn't going to call in and uh, tell me that I can actually give him a call now. And let me see. Let me see if I can call him right now. You still with me, um, Rob? Our squid? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, leave, I'm leaving the headset off right now. So uh, I'll put it on if we feel it's worth the risk. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me let me give this guy a call. I'm going to actually call this guy right now. He's actually in rehearsal, uh, and I'm going to be giving John David a call. So let me bring John David in here, and let me see if I actually have his uh, his 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 regular number in this. And if so, um, while I'm trying to get John David in here, um, there were a couple of other elections that they were keeping their eyes on across the country. We, we were talking about just before we went live, you we were talking about Utah, you were talking about a couple of places. While I try to get John in here, I'm going to let you talk about those elections across the country that are going to mean, you know, some some key points heading into these uh, presidential elections in three years. Yeah, uh, so – the issue there is in, in some of these races, now in the New Jersey governor's race, that's not considered as competitive. It's more of a Democratic state, and there's a fairly popular candidate there. So it's the margin of victory is the thing that's most up in the air. But again, it'll be due to a lot of local issues facing the state of New Jersey. Virginia, I think, is a bigger national bellwether because it's more of a purple state. Uh, they had a Republican governor last, then Governor McAuliffe, who just finished his terms. Uh, and so now it's You've got the lieutenant governor who's a Democrat versus Ed Gillespie, the former chair of the RNC, and Virginia, of course. Uh, you know, so goes Virginia, so goes the nation in a lot of ways. It's been interesting to look at the polls coming out of Virginia. There's been a lot of scrutiny on Ed Gillespie uh, mm -hmm. for really going – negative in playing the race card the last few weeks in a desperate attempt to close the gap, and it, it actually worked. He closed the gap. He's within the margin of error in the last couple of days where he was down uh, much bigger about a week or so ago, and what he was doing is he made it all about those Confederate monuments, the issue from Charlottesville, and uh, he played Donald Trump's race game. Uh, talk, talking about immigration and uh, you know appealing to white supremacists uh, subtly, not directly, but doing it very similar to Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and uh, and and it worked. He closed the polls, and so he he was running commercials about how he's going to make sure that they preserve all the all the monuments because of their history, and whereas. Uh, the lieutenant governor, Northam, wants to get rid of them. Well, that's not Northam's policy. Northam says it should be a local decision. Each community decides for itself. That seems a very democratic uh, and fair way to do it, that each community can make its own decisions rather than the state telling them what to do. But Gillespie's lying about that. And then the other big issue that's been there has been the gun issue. And while the nation looks at some of these recent shootings in New York and Texas and elsewhere uh, – New York, but not a shooting, but you know some of these incidents – uh, mm -hmm. And so they're lying about Northam's record on guns. Northam is a Virginia. He's not against guns. Guns are big in Virginia. That's the NRA's headquarters down there, and it's a very big gun culture state. And mm -hmm. Northam is not against guns. He doesn't try to. He doesn't believe in taking away people's guns. He's a Second Amendment guy. He thinks we ought to fix the background check. Is his position, which I think is very popular across the nation. Uh, but they've been misleading it, and so you see, gun owners in Virginia are going over two to one for Gillespie. 
and he and Northam is getting less than a third of the gun vote in uh, Virginia of gun owners because they're single issue minded. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of other issues that could be influencing people's vote, but the gun issue is uh, sacrosanct in, in at least in Virginia as it is in other places, uh, Missouri and other states where you've got to have a solid record on guns or you're never going to make it. So mm-hmm. that's going to be an interesting issue. So again, it's it's a local issue. It has nothing to do with national politics. It has to do with some distortions. And, uh, you know, we'll see where it leads. But right now, that looks like it's going to be one of the key issues that affects the outcome of the race. Right. And, and we got John David joining us. And again, you know what? John David's joining us right now. But first of all, again, I dropped the ball. I actually should have sat off the show again. Last week, we were on point. We gave our moment of silence just at, at, at the top of the show. But this, again, this is how crazy and how used to this it has become for us. Another week, another mass shooting. And again, usually when this happens, we usually give a moment of silence. And I don't mean that disrespect the show or disrespect those lives lost in Texas. But real quick, before we bring John David in, let's just take our quick eight-second moment of silence for those who lost their lives in the tragedy this weekend in Texas. Real quick. Hold on. God bless. All right, guys, man. And again, it, it just shows us how how normal this has become in the last five years. And again, I feel that, again, I feel always this has been not a gun issue, but a mental health issue. Um, anybody can spin it the way they want at the end of the day. Um, these people who, who do these mass shootings, with an exception of a few, uh, majority of times these people are, you know, they have their issues and you know, because of the programs that are being cut due to, you know, not just President Trump, but, you know, for the last 10 years, you know, these programs to help those with mental issues, including those coming back from the military, you know, they're being cut left and right. So, you know, I wish we could do something a lot better um, so family members aren't trying to help these people out with their issues. And, you know, there's just a lot of a lot of things, you know, uh, but we got John David. John David, what's going on, man? I mean, I, I'm in rehearsal, getting ready for the 17th. I'll be out there in Brockton, as you know. I say Brockton, like how you say. Uh, uh, November 17th, at least that's my best Brockton uh, impersonation. Now, yeah, hey, hold on. You you actually said it good, because uh, I saw Genuine, and no, I'm not disrespecting Genuine, but he said Brocktown. Now, that was funny, because he said it like that, but that's like an inside thing here in Brockton. We all call it Brocktown, or we call it Brock yes. Vegas. So that was pretty cool when he did it, but Again, we are so excited to see you, Shea Williams, and the R&B legend Genuine coming to town here on November seventeenth. Man, I'm yo, you just and here's here's the thing, R Squid. Yes, I have a house full of girls tonight. Girls, like when I say a house full of girls, I'm probably gonna say double digit amount of women in this house tonight. And John David just sang to these women over FaceTime live, and then it's just me and Marky and two little boys in the house, and we were, we were left out. <laughs> well, it sounds like he made their night, so way to go. <laughs> well, 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 she, well she, she, his wife said she's going to cook for me, so that's... Well, you there know. you go. That's Talk about sing for your supper, right? Yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> I literally sang for my supper, so I'm looking forward to some of that good chicken Alfredo, Don, if you, if you want, if you're listening. Uh, I'm Alfredo and deep fried Oreos, and I ain't playing now. <laughs> and my wife makes a mean deep fried Oreo. I'll tell you, you know, you know what love is is when when you go to the fair and you and you and you go and you see a deep fried Oreo at the fair and you pay like six bucks for like three fried Oreos and you eat it and then as you're walking through the fair, the wife says, "You know, I can make these. You know how easy it is, right?" And then you say. Really? Can you? And then you get home, and she gets out the deep fryer. She gets the fresh canola oil. We go to Shaw's. She grabs four packages of Oreos and then just deep fries those Oreos. And and you only pay the $4 for the four packages of Oreos versus the three little Oreos. Oh, my God, with a glass of hot chocolate and chocolate. Oh, my Lord. Look, 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 look. I'm I'm already sold, man. What what, what are you doing? (laughs) Right now, I can't get, them, I can't get that right now, man. Like, why, 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 why are you torturing me? Or, or, why, 
Or what you do is you layer the bowl with the deep fried Oreos, and then you put ice cream on the top of it with some whipped cream. I see. Now, now I thought we were friends. Um, you know what I'm saying? My eyes are in your face. Backstab, bro. That's how I feel. No. That's how I feel. So, John David's on the show tonight. He's he's actually in rehearsal right now. So we're, this is a special call for us. And um, like I said, you know we've been working together with Daryl Concrete right over there, Concrete Entertainment Promotions. Um, and you know originally this show was scheduled to be Drew Hill. And originally right off the bat, you know I said to Daryl, I said, hey, you got an opener? And he's like, no, not yet. He's like, this is just in his infant stages. I said, hey, I got a guy. He's like, really? And I said, you know I had two. Actually, I actually had two people. I had two people. I had I had you and Louis Bello, and Louis Bello was in is in Nashville this week. So when I said uh, I couldn't get Louis Bello either, I said let me let me make sure that I can get my man John see if he could come down. And you were like, tell him what you said. You was you was like what? And, for, and, and then when the things went the way they did, and then I told you genuine, you was like, oh man, this is even better. <laughs> count me in. That's before you even told me anything of numbers, dates. Or, I said count me in. Just count me in. One sentence if you call me, you already know that's 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 money. So mm-hmm. I, I'm that's already that, that's already good money. And then two, um, you, you said Drew Hill, and I was like down. Then you said genuine. I said definitely down because <laughs> the first song I ever sang to a girl was so anxious. Mm. So I, you know what I mean? Like 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 that's that means something to me. But I guess to share the same stage as the legend himself. So you know what I mean, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna, we're working we're working on the set right now, um, and uh, it's you know I'm doing 25 minutes, and it's gonna be and I'm gonna, uh, we gonna we gonna rock it out. Oh damn, you're doing 25? Oh doing, man, oh, I'm doing, yeah. Just, oh man, I'm doing this is gonna be. Man. Oh man, this is gonna be a good night. You know, tickets are still available. Seventy five dollars VIP. Um, General admission, I and I forget the price, but you want to jump on the Facebook page and get that general admission price. I'm going to say, and and, and I should know this, I'm going to say 35 which it, it may be the price. Just please double check, but I do know that that, that the VIPs are $75, um, and I believe that's going to get you the meet and greet and a meal. And um, and you're going to get to see Shay Williams, who her videos have been being posted on this event. And look, we got Genuine. You don't have to talk about Genuine. TGT, all the hits he's had. And R Squared, did you ever ask the kids in your school if they knew Genuine yet? I haven't been back to class since our last show. Oh. We did it on Thursday. I have class tomorrow night, and I intend to ask them about it. Oh, you're going to be the, the – the, how, how, what's the average age of your students? Uh, in their probably early 20s. They know genuine, especially. Yeah, the- I'm sure, but they're going to be upset because uh, they can't get in on this ticket thing. Oh man, tell them to fly out. <laughs> yeah, they'll come up to Boston. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> come, come up to Boston. If they win tickets, they can come up to Boston and, and hang out with us. But again, John David, we've been posting a lot of John David's videos of him, just you know, different shows, different voices. But you know, he's calling in here right now, and he's in rehearsal, so I'm pretty sure his voice status is on point. Uh-huh. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over for a little bit here and let John David give you guys a little taste of what's gonna happen on November 17th. Let's do this, John. Okay, hold on. <laughs> me, 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 me. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Long ago, and oh. Far away, I fell in love with you before the second show. Oh, and your guitar, and you sound so. But you're not really here. It's just the radio. Oh, see, don't you remember you told me you loved me, baby? You said you'd be coming back this way again. 
baby, 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 oh, baby, yeah, I love you, I really do, tuned in upstairs i know we've got some people in the chat we've actually wow we're actually at 550 people reach for tonight's show on facebook live got 36 people viewing with us tonight good stuff uh john david hanging out with us he's going to be opening up for genuine on november 17th at the shaw center actually it's the concrete entertainment complex at the shaw center it's a daryl wright concrete entertainment promotions event Tickets are still available, but they're going fast. And I know next week, Daryl, when when these guys all get here in town, I know that Daryl is going to be doing a big radio push, radio promotional tour, getting these guys out there to promote and get this show going. Um, and like I said, you don't want to be left out, you know. And I don't want to. I, I, you know what? And I know originally we we originally Drew Hill was supposed to come to the show, and things happen. Their show is going to be on Saturday night, but I, you know what? I'm just going to let people know this is the show. You want to be if, at I, I'm, if, if, if I if I may, because I got to get back to rehearsal center. Yes, if yep. I just give a push, we already know what Genuine is going to do. We, mm-hmm. we he he's a legend. He's already proven his point. All right, so you already know you're getting your money worth just with him alone. Mm-hmm. Then you got the lovely Shay Williams, and 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 she you you just look her up. Look her up if you don't know. Just look her up. Mm. And then, if I can, just toot my horn a little bit, a little, give a little beep beep action, Sinister. Um, <laughs> then come to Big Daddy Smith for nothing. All right, so, 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 it, that that's just a little taste of what you. It's hard for me to to boast on myself, but I just want people to know the level of work that's going into the show to make sure they have a good time. So, if y'all out there, y'all listening, get your tickets, get your VIP tickets. It's going to be a bomb show. We got my man Sinister. He's, he's like, like, listen, Brockman, stand up. You got to make it happen. Mm. Yeah, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good show, and I'm so glad that when Daryl was looking around for this, you know, for, for, for this event and stuff, you know, he, he reached out to me and I'm again, like with silk, I'm just very proud to be involved with Daryl. And I know Daryl's trying to do big, big things. And he's, he's looking to do these type of shows cross country. So, you know, this is, this is a, this is a big deal. And, you know, he's also looking to do other type shows. These nineties R and B shows are hit, but I actually told Daryl, I'm like, Hey, you know, nineties rock music, a lot of people go to these clubs for these 90s rock shows, and if you can get some of these 90s groups that, that people would love to see up close and personal in, in, a, in, a, in a club, you know, like a, like a, you know, a nice VIP atmosphere, you, you would definitely do it. So I'd like to see him even, you know, attempt to do some types of shows like that. You know, that's, you know, that's some great stuff right there. Yeah. And, you know, wow. I, th- I, I thank you, man, for calling in, but before we get out of here with you, Plug all your social media before we get out of here, man, with you. It's, well, very simple. It's all at John David Show, uh, at J-O-N-D-A-D-I-D-S-H-O-W, at John David Show. Do not put an H in my name. It is not J-O-H-N. It is John, J-O-N, the real John. I don't. I didn't mean to get all excited there. I got a little worked up. I'm going to tone it back a little bit. At John David Show, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the whole nine yards. I'll see y'all on the on the web, and I will see y'all on the seventeenth. Mm, yeah, now you know what, Chicken Alfredo and deep fry Oreos, man, that's coming really at you. What I'm going there for. <laughs> like, if I can honest, that's really what I'm going there for. Chicken Alfredo <laughs> and the deep fried Oreos. The concept is like a byproduct to get me to the deep fried Oreos. So, you know, what you know? listen, I I ain't too proud to bet. Okay, mm, I, mm, I, I mm, think mm. I proved that. Well. I thank you for calling in. I know rehearsals is busy for you, and I know this is a big show for you, and I know you're real happy about doing this. You're on it. And I, you know what? I'm glad that you just hit me up and said you wanted to call into this show. And you know what? I, yeah, I, I, told, I appreciate you. I told you, you I would. I said I got to make it happen for my man, Sinister. There, there you go, man. So I'm going to let you go back and rip it up in the studio. All right, man. Y'all All right. Take it easy. All Thanks, right. John. All right, man. That was John David calling in. He's going to be here, as I said, November 17th. Genuine in the house, Shay Williams. 
Concrete Promotions at the Concrete Entertainment Complex at the Shaw Center, November 17th, 21 plus. We actually have a ticket giveaway. Rob, what do you think of the uh, person who submitted the uh, video? I haven't been able to see it yet. Okay, we got a guy that was here in Brockton. He actually submitted a video of him singing his song as to why he wants to take his uh, lady to the Genuine concert. He pretty much sang lyrics to a Genuine song. Well, that's the way to go. I like the idea that I've got to to play it. Angel Cosme, good stuff. Um, Actually, we're going to be pushing to get more people to call in because there's going to be one male winner and one female winner, and no females have actually put their videos in yet, so I'm going to really be pushing for females to put those videos in and win these pair of tickets to see this show next Friday night, November 17th. And you know what's funny is how fast time does really fly, our squid. We're, here we are, we were talking about last year's shocker of an election. I remember us getting off the air, and I remember going to work, and I remember sitting in front of my TV at 1 in the morning, and the election was still undecided. It was about 12.20 when those Michigan Clinton had the lead up until about 12.15 a.m. the next day. And once those Michigan votes came in, it was all down. Oh, no, maybe it was Ohio. It was all downhill from there. All of a sudden, that big surge of Trump supporters came in. And pretty much took this election from the Democrats' hands, and it from there on out, it's just been a roller coaster ride every day. Not even just on the internet, in the newspapers, in entertainment news. I don't think I've ever seen a media blitz for any president ever in the history of my life. Uh, have I seen a president that has just been in the in the local? And, and just in the, the you know the public eye as as Donald Trump has whether it's positive negative or hilarious Saturday Night Live <clears throat> had its biggest ratings ever coming off its worst rating season almost ever single handedly with just you know satiring Trump and it looks like that their this season this year is headed the same route they actually took home an Emmy. I mean, I don't know. Do you do you watch SNL at all, R. Squid? Yeah, I do. I, I you know, I, I, there are usually a couple of good skits to watch each week. So uh, I like the political things. I like the news. Uh, I can do, I can do without about half the show. <laughs> now, for those people who complain about SNL, if you're a fan of Saturday Night Live, you obviously don't realize that Saturday Night Live has been tongue <clears throat> tongue in cheek, and they've been involved with political satire from day one. And a lot of people don't even realize you've got a couple of people who are high ups in political standings. Al Franken. Al Franken was one of the second groups of people who came through as an SNL comedian. Yeah, he was a writer for the show for many years, and every so often he would do a skit. Most of the time he was a writer behind the scenes, but he did a lot of their political stuff in the 70s, Mm -hmm. uh, late 70s. And eighties, he he had this thing that he did where he drew the electoral map uh, without you know just from scratch on a on just a blank piece of paper with a pen. It's amazing, mm-hmm. you know, the shape mm-hmm. of all the states and everything. It was, it was a really good skit. And then during the Gulf War, he did a couple of good satir- satirical things. Uh, but yeah, he's been around for a long time, and then decided to do something more serious with his life. And uh, you know, has been a, a pretty vocal senator from Minnesota for many years now. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize, you know, a lot of people don't realize these things when you talk about these senators and people who have these backgrounds, you know, from, you know, you know, when people were complaining about Trump being a reality TV show and, the, you know, the first thing that people were saying, how can we put a reality TV guy? I mean, what are you talking about? I'm like, Ronald Reagan, the president, he was an actor. You know, it, it, this is just actors and actresses and, and people it, that are celebs have been in, in there for a long time. Senator John Thompson. He was in he was in Die Hard too, you know what I'm saying? There's so many people out there. Minnesota, we've got a legendary professional wrestler, Jesse Ventura, who who was running that that area up there. So I mean, you, you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger, governor of California. Come on now, you know it, it. I get what people were upset about, but again, be informed, know your politics. You know did. Donald Trump isn't the first guy to come from that cloth of entertainment to take 
uh, you know, a high seat such as, I mean, he's the president. Well, I would still say Reagan was an actor, so I would still say Reagan would be that first guy to take that seat that was from that celebrity stardom. And Ronald Reagan was a pretty was a pretty big actor. He wasn't no slouch as an actor. Ronald Reagan was a was was a known guy. You know, he he had a lot of these westerns and Win Win for the Gipper was was the the, the famous you know thing that they had for him. So. We've got all this stuff going on. Is there anything you want to touch base on this week? Because we, we still haven't been able to get Ken in, and Ken did say he was out of town. Oh, I lost you again. Oh, he's going to take his headset off. I don't know what's to... going on with that. Yeah, no, we got to figure that out. We'll, we'll get that taken yeah, care of. What I was saying is with Ronald Reagan, the di- the big difference was, you know, he, he was a decent actor. He had a, a decent acting career. Some of the famous movies that, that seemed to follow him forever, like Bedtime for Bonzo and Win One for the Gipper and all that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, he didn't just all of a sudden run for president. He got involved in politics, ran for governor of California, served two yep. terms, you know, ran for president and lost and then ran for president and won. So he had made a pretty full transition from acting to politics. Granted, governor of California was a pretty big first step. But he had a lot of people around helping him, uh, and so it was a very different pathway than what President Trump did. Correct. Yes. Where, you know, he didn't have that group of people, and he didn't get sort of a a slow start. He went right for president, and you know his campaign was a reality show, and his presidency is a reality show. You know, for better or for worse, that's the style he's taking. I mean, it has nothing to do with his policy at this point. Mm-hmm. Not in, not in this discussion. It's just the tact he's taking. You know, the the media created him. You know, for all of his attacks on the media, the funny thing is he won the primary and he won the general election because of the media. So it's it's quite interesting that now he makes the media his enemy uh, now that he's in office. But you know, it's it's a whole different story. It's 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 it's, it's interesting to watch, as you say. <clears throat> you know, it's funny too because I go back to le- one year ago today, and I remember when he won. It was about two in the morning. And I'm sitting there watching him take his speech, and 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 it was a surreal moment for me because I'm looking at him up on stage, and over his right shoulder, I see Omarosa, and right there, I think that moment, I felt this is where this country is headed, and it and I was dead right with my thought when I just seen him on stage and I saw Omarosa up there, and I'm like. Where are we headed right now? Because you have a reality TV show star and one of the worst, most single-handed reality show villains up here on yeah. the biggest platform of political media in Omarosa. And I was expecting Omarosa to take over the reins uh, when Kelly uh, Conway disappeared. Um, but then Omarosa actually showed up on – I forget what TV show she showed up on, and they annihilated her too – and uh, she actually lost her cool, and she actually yeah, she, her- she tried to help out on a show, but the problem yeah. is she's just such an uninformed person, at least yes. regarding political issues. She may be good in business, but po- political-wise, she was a terrible spokesperson for the president yeah. and his campaign. She just wasn't informed, and so that, that went very, very poorly for her, and that was the end of her political yeah, uh, she got, aspirations. She got- she got destroyed, and uh, you know they they she was she was actually due to be on um, I want to say the View, and there was a there was something that happened backstage or before in the green room or something, and then she ended up not going on the View or something as like that. So I think they you know they put her back on the back burner. Kellyanne Conway, we used to see her a ton, and then she started taking hits left and right, and uh, she was losing her composure. Um, it got to this point where – and here's the thing about this Trump thing that they do. You can see it coming a mile away when people are almost ready to be sent packing. Um, they stop being misinformed, and they and it's like they throw them out to the wolves. We saw this with Sean Spicer. Sean Spicer was that guy, and then all of a sudden he's up there, and then it was like – it was almost like they were like, don't tell him nothing. Let him try to fend for himself. We're getting ready to get rid of this guy. You saw it with, you saw it with Sean Spicer. It was like two weeks before Sean Spicer went away, he was taking a beating from the media, and he was pretty much like, I have no idea what's going on. I'm not being told. And then there was this whole thing with him trying to hide behind the bush one time. And it, it and we see this. We see this. I mean, did you notice it yourself with these people? Like, you've seen it coming a mile away. 
Oh yeah, you can. It's it's a it's an interesting playbook that they use because they put these people out there and rely upon them like they did Sean Spicer from day one. They forced him to tell stories about the inaugural crowd photos, and you know that's embarrassing for a guy like Spicer that had a, had a, somewhat of a career before this. Uh, not as big as being the presidential spokesperson, but certainly a big career. And now he's forced to be part of this reality show experiment. Uh, and then, you know, what happens is with, with Sean Spicer and others, when, when they've decided that they've run their cycle, they uh, all of a sudden block them from the inner conversations. And then they throw them out there to do these things where they uh, don't know the answers to questions because they're no longer part of the inner conversations, or they actually give them misinformation to let them sort of hang themselves. Uh, and then you, you know once that happens that they're going to be gone. They'll be fired or asked to resign within a few days, if not a week at most, uh, after those incidents. And you've seen it a few times where people do that. There, there's no loyalty. There's no. Uh, th there's really no dignity in, in the way that they do that. But you know, I think anybody who's part of this organization knows it at this point. And uh, you know, you'll see it coming if it happens to you. But there are certainly people who are still willing to join the, the team there. Uh, which I guess, you know, we, we want the president to have good people around him. Uh, it can only make things better. But, uh, you know, people, it'll be interesting to see how many people continue to want to serve uh, the more that this track record goes. Yeah, you know, you saw that with Kellyanne Conway. She was kind of thrown under the bus. Her husband was actually due to get a big position in this in this cabinet at the White House. And once they threw her under the bus and stuff hit the fan, and then this Russian stuff started, um, Kellyanne Conway's husband actually told Trump, I'm, "You know what? I'm all done. I'm not. I'm not taking any positions. I'm all done." You know. And then there were a lot of people who just they didn't want to start opening up their books because once this stuff with the Russians started and all these investigations that are going on right now. Um, they're looking at these people with a with with a fine tooth comb. They they've got to show their financials, and um, we're up to like nine people now who are being questioned. I actually watched Meet the Press. I think it was I saw this Sunday while we were in the hotel. Uh, Meet the Press was say, they were saying there's nine people who are actually being questioned, but there's only three that the media that the mainstream media really knows about that's being questioned. Um, and they're saying that, you know, they said that everybody is cooperating. Um, everybody's handing over what they're being asked of to hand over. Uh, but one of the rumors that did come out of this, and it's, it's pretty kind of scary, um, Manafort and these guys, they're, they're all being linked to what we thought early on. They're saying organized crime. This has, this may, ha this actually may have nothing to do with the actual election. This is going to go back to organized crime, and if we all remember during the election when they said that Trump was being investigated by the FBI and the CIA with Russian connections was because they've been investigating Trump Towers years before this even all started because of the Russians setting up base with organized crime out of Trump Towers and fixing boxing matches and things of, some, of such sort. If... I'm going to ask you this, R squared. If they can get uh, our president connected to any of these, because we remember Trump Towers was the site of many boxing matches over these years. If the fix was in and they can connect Trump, because Trump did own a casino, which he dumped before he went to run this campaign. If they can connect Trump to organized crime and, and fixing fights and things like that, what would that do to his presidency? Would you think he would have to step down or would he just let the court process go through? No, I mean, the one thing you know about Donald Trump is he'll never let the court process go through. He has, he thinks at the moment that he's, you know, can outsmart people or outspend people by, you know, putting together a dream team of his own to prevent anything from ever going to court. And I think the minute he smelled that he could lose, he'll find a back door to quietly exit uh, and then claim some kind of victory or, or conspiracy against him or something like that. He'll never actually take the fall. But it's interesting. I don't know. You know, I guess what we should all want is just that the truth comes out. That's really what we should want. Nothing more than that. Nothing less than that. But it's interesting, you know, with the organized crime that you talk about, what we're seeing is, like you said, everybody getting excited because of possible indictments from the special counsel and everything. But right now, there's really nothing that's criminal that's related to the campaign or the election. Right. There are some things that are unethical. There are things that are troublesome. And in theory, 
if Congress wanted to, you could use some of that for an impeachment, but it's way premature to even think that there is grounds for that. There's people who've been screaming for it for months and are, are excited about it, but really there's no basis for it at the moment. Not that, not that I think he should be in office for all the reasons that we've discussed previously, you know, mental stability and others. But uh, as far as the special counsel stuff goes, you know, it's interesting. Now, for many, many years, uh, you know, they, they talked about the Suns with their interviews in Forbes magazine and Golf Digest about the Russian investment money that comes in. Well, that's been the real key. Because of all of Donald Trump's bankruptcies, uh, you know, U.S. banks aren't willing to invest in him. They stopped being willing to invest in a long time. And he had to go to places like Russia just for business. Forget the election, the campaign, and anything to do with politics or, or our government. It had to do with the fact that that was the only place he could go for investment, which was Russian investment, whether it was organized crime based or not. You had, you know, the Russian oligarchs that had this money and you saw that he was laundering money by these fake business deals, uh, you know, real estate deals where they would buy a piece of property at four or five times the value of the property because that's how they were, you know, laundering money and getting in connections with his business. Uh, now, whether or not that ever is going to have a connection to the campaign. I, right now, there's, there's not really a, a, a real nexus for that. Mm -hmm. It just goes to the man that we elected <clears throat> president, and, and we should have known that. The media did not cover it in as much detail as they should have. Again, the media created this man, uh, and, that, that, and I don't know why he criticizes them so much, because they protected him from this type of review. I could have seen any kind of show, you know, a 60 Minutes, a Dateline, a 2020, any of those type of shows, you know, a special thing on his businesses with the bankruptcies and his, you know, uh, unscrupulous behavior with subcontractors where he terminates the contract and then, you know, uh, they have to agree to something and, you know, all these different things. And it was briefly touched upon but never covered. And the biggest thing was this foreign investment uh, in that because, you know, they now own significant properties through his businesses. So it's really been an interesting thing. But at the end of the day, you know, this goes to the real estate community more so than it does to our politics or our elections. So I think people are premature in getting excited that this is going to lead to something. Maybe it will. There may be something else out there. But everything that the special counsel has uncovered so far has gone to previous business dealings and not really a threat to the election, even though we know that the Russians were attempting to play via Facebook and other social media. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. You know, we talked about this stuff before. We, we talked about this stuff way back when the news had come out that the CIA and stuff was in Trump Towers, you know, looking at wiretaps because they were worried about this this whole thing with, with rigging fights and things like that. So, you know, you make a great point, and I'm glad, I'm glad you were able to give us some type of uh, information on that. Now, we got our picks at 748. Uh, before we get into our picks, today's the day, everyone. Today's the big release. The Xbox One X was released today. Um, usually I'm that guy that gets his game system right off the bat. I was actually with Major Nelson two weeks ago. Real ecstatic. Ken was actually pissed at me last Friday night because I actually jumped on the brand new Call of Duty World War II and was broadcasting live. And games have come so far because I started out on a on a Commodore 64 and a, and a, and a, and a, a, a Radio Shack TRS 80. And um, yes, yes, I do, Rob. I do have the list of the of the uh, teams that are playing this weekend. I'm going to get get into that. Um, and I sit here and I look at at Call of Duty Friday night when I sat down to play it, and I actually shared the video. I don't know if Rob was able to catch that video of the gameplay of the Call of Duty. Um, yes, I did. But the game opens Impressive. up. It, it opens up with us, you know, storming Normandy Beach, and um, and we're taking fire. And I'm sitting there just blown away, and it's just seamless now from video from video gameplay to actual gameplay. It's just seamless. And you have to storm the beach and find cover, and then we I have to take my banger and, and blow a hole into the iron wall so I can get to the bunkers. And then when I get to the bunkers, the guy that's with me, he gets stabbed. Uh, and, and it's it's just the, the graphics just visually was just impressive. Uh, the speed of the game on multiplayer is just unbelievable. They have this new war mode, which you can have up to 40-something people in the game at one time. But, guys, if you're playing this game and you're used to playing Call of Duty, you know, I got to say something. Multiplayer used to be run around and kill everybody and build up your points. This new war mode objective 
It's not about running around and getting your kills. When it tells you that the objective is to take the fuel depot and blow up the fuel depot, we have to work together to blow up the fuel depot. Don't worry about getting your kills. It's objectives. And then if we take the fuel depot, you move on to the next objective, and then the next objective, and then you win the round. And a lot of these people, it's it's impressive because now it's a thinking game. It's not just run around and shoot. So I really like the aspect of that game. But the Xbox One X did come out today. Call of Duty came out on Friday. They're really pushing the 4K aspect of this with new TVs. And um, I'm really, I'm really enthused to see what Xbox is going to do from here on out, headed into Christmas as far as sales go. So uh, we've got that out today. Um, We've got let me see we've got some big games. We've got the Philadelphia Eagles still making whew, big noise. Uh, they traded for Jay Ajay, and I believe did he, he had a touchdown, didn't he, this weekend? Yeah, they said they were going to use him sparingly just to get him integrated in the system. But you know he uh, he had a few carries and about seventy something yards and a touchdown. He made a really good first impression. I'll take that. I'll take that. You know, and if I'm if I'm the Eagles, like I said. When they made that grab, I was like, you know what? I'm that's my pick for the NFC right there. Boom! It, they're they're the team to beat. So I'm gonna get into these picks right now. It's 7:51. Uh, we're at week 10. Jesus, week 10. Patriots Season's going off. fast. Yeah, the, the Patriots are off their bye week this week, so we're gonna have Seattle in Arizona this week. Uh, who you like? Well, I'll tell you, both teams looked pretty bad. Uh, that's a that's become a pretty good rivalry. Uh, I don't know that Seattle's going to continue the slide that they're on. I'm going to have to go Seattle on the road. Yeah, I'm going to take Seattle too this week. Uh, you know, they had a really good game against the Texans the week before. They had a tough game last week, but I'm going to I'm going to take Seattle this week, bouncing back in Arizona. We got Cincinnati in Tennessee. I got to I got to go Tennessee. Cincinnati just looked terrible uh, last week at Jacksonville and. Uh, you know, as Diesel pointed out, they just can't win on the road. So I'm taking Tennessee at home. Yeah, we got uh, Cleveland in Detroit. I'm going with Detroit, and uh, I'm also taking Tennessee in that in that last game. Yeah, and Detroit, that's a no. Cleveland's, who knows if they're going to win a game this year. Yeah. Well, next big game, Green Bay taking on Chicago. Green Bay without Aaron Rodgers. This game is in Chicago. This is one of those games where – Chicago always shows up to play when Green Bay comes to town. I like Chicago with a field goal. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Green Bay, uh, you know, now that Hundley's gotten some some uh, some playing time, uh, you know, they, they need to start winning. Chicago has not looked good this year, but you're right. They do come to play, and they're at home. I think I'm going to go with Chicago with you, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We got our Chargers, L.A. Chargers in Jacksonville. Look, San Diego lost a tough one here in New England, but they are winning some games. I'm going to have to take the Chargers over Jacksonville. You know, it's funny. I, I, I think the Chargers are doing a pretty decent job this season, but Jacksonville's been doing really well at home. Look at the way they just manhandled Cincinnati. I think I'm going to go with Jacksonville this week. All right, cool. Minnesota and Washington. Washington's been up and down. They've had it, they've had it tough. Minnesota's been the same way. Um Look, they're going into Washington. Washington's a tough place to play. Um, my heart right now, I, I feel like Washington's going to take this game from Minnesota this weekend. I was impressed the way Washington was able to shut down Seattle, uh, you know, shut down their offense, whatever, last week. But I think Minnesota's looking too good. I think it's going to be their week. Okay, we got New Orleans heading into Buffalo. Now, if this game was in New Orleans, I'd probably be leaning towards New Orleans and Drew Brees in that Superdome. But, look, Buffalo's been real tough at home. They're playing some good ball. I'm going to take Buffalo in this game. I'm going to take Buffalo also. I don't know what the weather's supposed to be for the game, and I think that's going to make a lot of the difference. But, you know, if they have more seasonable weather, New Orleans can, you know, have a little bit of trouble with that. But I think you're right. Buffalo looks good at home. I'm going with the Bills. Jets in Tampa Bay. Jets are in Tampa Bay. You know, like I said, Tampa has not panned out the way that I thought they would pan out. The Jets have been up and down. They've been, you know, talk of firing the coach. Their locker room was kind of divided for a little while there. Uh, but Tampa's just not doing good things. Jameis Winston went down last weekend again um, with another shoulder injury. I'm going to have to take the Jets in Tampa this weekend. This is another toss-up, you know, that uh, – that- uh, Detroit game was, a, uh, excuse me, the Green Bay Chicago game was a toss up, and this is another toss up for me. I struggle with it. 
Uh, I think I'm going to go Tampa just because they're at home, and I think Fitzpatrick wants to play. Good job. Pittsburgh in Indianapolis. Uh, Jacoby Brissett has been playing good ball. It's just that they, you know, they've still got some other injuries on that team. They're, you know, they're, they're losing some games that they should be winning. Pittsburgh, again, they've been doing, they're up and down too. Um, but Pittsburgh has been winning solidly. I'm going to take Pittsburgh in Indy in this game. Yeah, I've got to go with the Steelers. They're just too strong of a team, even on the road. And we got a uh, next game coming up. Houston Texans against the Rams. Houston um, playing some good ball despite the injuries that they have. But that Rams offensive line is what the talk has been. Um, providing a lot of protection, able to get the ball off. Um, their running game, I, I, I'm going to have to go with the Rams at home on this one. Yeah, I've got to take the Rams. I think they're a much stronger team. I mean, they manhandled my Giants this week. It was terrible to watch, but at the same time, it wasn't surprising. So Rams are looking good. I think they're the real deal this year. Yep. We got Atlanta with Dallas coming to town. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott did play last week, but I believe the suspension – does a suspension kick in this week? You know, have- the courts – this is the whole problem with this thing. You know, if the NFL is supposed to have the responsibility to govern itself, then the courts can't keep jumping in every week and changing the rules in the middle – because you never know what's going to happen. So I, I don't know if Ezekiel Elliott is ever going to serve the suspension or, or what's going to happen with that at the end of the day. Last week, we were told he was going to be suspended, so yes. that affected our picks. Yeah. This week, I'm going Dallas. Okay, so you're going with Dallas. I'm, I think I'm going to go with Dallas, too. It, 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 it looks like he's still playing. He played last week. I think I'm going to take Dallas. I got to give a big shout-out to Luis Martins, who actually is listening in the chat. Uh He's got a great business over there, Remax Synergy. Um, he's a realtor. He's got some beautiful houses that he's puts up that are for sale here in the Brockton area. Some great stuff. So if you're looking for a home or a rental, you want to reach out at Lewis Martins at Remax Synergy over there on. Um, uh, uh, they're on. Um, I think they're on. I forget what street they're exactly on. I'll have to look that up and get that information for you guys. Um, I'm looking at the picks here. I picked Dallas. We've got the Giants and San Francisco, and it's Pleasant Street is where <laughs> his place is located. Uh, Giants and San Francisco. I'm going to let Oscar because Giants are his team. Uh, well, you know, look, uh, the, the, the good thing about this game is one of them has to win, and I suppose it could be a tie. That would be poetic justice if it ends in a tie because neither one of these teams wants to win this year. The Giants have the one win over Denver, which is still surprising. Mm. Uh, San Francisco, you know, I, I don't know. It looks like both teams have just given up. The Giants just have nobody left, so they, they couldn't play if they wanted to. And San Francisco, I think maybe they're trying to turn things around. And since they're in San Francisco, i got to go with the home team. Jimmy Garoppolo uh, is out there now. Um, look, I, I, I'm going to go with Jimmy. I'm going to give Jimmy that nod at home. Let's see what happens, and that's the only reason why I'm going that route. Next game, New England against Denver. This is a tough one for me because when New England goes out to Denver, they don't play the best ball ever. They've they've taken some major losses in Denver. Um, The only reason why I'm going with New England in this game this week is because they're coming off the bye week. If they weren't coming off the bye week, I think I would have given the Pats an L. But the Pats are coming off a bye week. They're going to be well rested. They've had two weeks to prepare for this Denver team. I got to go with New England on this on this one. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. It's, it was a close call because Denver is a tough place to play, and the Patriots just normally struggle there. But I have to believe that Belichick has them ready uh, with the extended time to prepare. And I, I know you can't really prepare for the uh, altitude until you get out there. But I'm still going to go with uh, Patriots. Well, knowing Kraft, I believe they actually may have flown out there. They're, they would have left early since it was the bye week. Plus, there's another big story here that a lot of people may not know about. If you listen to this show and you're outside the Boston area, you may not know this, but there is a big story going around here. I don't know if it made it national, but there was this whole story uh, regarding um, after the Garoppolo trade that um, Belichick and Brady's relationship was was fractured and it's not what it used to be. And then some guy from ESPN reported that Brady was this and that about Garoppolo being sent away. And um, Brady actually came out on EI and said, no, that's not true. 
We don't know where you're getting the information from. Belichick actually got up on the on the on the um, podium this week and called. I th- I want to say what network it was. He called them fake news, and that and that you know how that is when Belichick says something like that. That's like everybody loves that. So I think this game here, it's not just about coming off that bye week and coming off that win. This team also knows they got to come out and win this game and shut everybody here in Boston, in the New England area, up and let them know there's nothing wrong with this locker room. This locker room is running the way that it always runs. And, you know, these fake stories, you know, just to get people trumped up, it, it, it just ain't happening. So I'm going with New England in a big way. Uh, Miami and Carolina. Man, Miami, I'm still shaking my head over them, giving away JGI. Um, and they've got some crucial games that were left on their on their season. I I I, I got to give this game to Carolina. I just I'm still shaking my head and trying to figure out this why they would are they just giving up the season already? I just don't understand, man. Yeah, th- there's got to be more to it. They haven't covered it down here in the level of detail you would think, and so I, I haven't seen any insight into it. Uh, other than the fact that people think that they didn't they weren't serious about trying to make a playoff run, they're more about rebuilding. Uh, and maybe that's a smart move. But the thing with the Panthers, remember, they traded away Kelvin Benjamin, uh, mm-hmm. their number one receiver, too. So, uh, you know, both teams look like they're trying to rebuild for next year. However, I think Carolina has some more weapons. Funchess has been stepping yeah. up to replace Benjamin. I'm going with the Panthers. Yeah, I'm going with the Panthers, too. And like I said, you know, I'm still shaking my head with whatever went down there in Miami. Um, again, you know, the, the Patriots are on a roll. But, you know, again... Every team, every week is one injury away. Like I just posted last week, I posted a picture and said that after this season, it's going to be support groups for fantasy football GMs because um, we had a record-breaking six, oh, seven trades are squid in our fantasy league this week. Seven trades for draft picks because the pickings of quarterback is is very minuscule out there. Um and it's it's just been a tough season overall for fantasy football owners just across the league, you know. And, I, and my and my heart goes out to these guys. And um, you know, you're playing in a league where you're going to win some big money, and your star quarterback goes down to an injury, and now that money that you were looking at is is going bye bye. So <clears throat> it's it's a tough one. So eight o'clock, another fast show in the books. Had a great wedding this weekend. I got to give a big shout out before we head out of air to uh, Mike and Megan who are on their honeymoon. They had a great weekend uh, for their marriage in Bristol, Rhode Island. It was a great time. I got to give a big shout out to my brother, Kevin Hayes. I spent the weekend with my brother this weekend. Got to see Janet Jackson last night. It was a good time. R squared. I'm going to let him say his goodbyes and shout outs. And hey, we got to wish Ken the best of luck and find out where the hell he is. And he said he was out of town. We just want to make sure he gets back safe and sound. Yeah, safe travels to our co-host, Ken, and uh, another good show. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Thanks, Keith, for all you do to make this thing happen every week. Appreciate it. No problem, man. And you know what? It's, we've got the big elections going on here in Brockton. Um, I'm, I actually haven't – I've been watching my, my Facebook chat, and um, I'm not getting any numbers yet because the, po- the polls here in Brockton actually close at 8. So we're probably not going to see anything till about 9 o'clock here in Brockton. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll have some numbers come in. Hopefully people got out and voted. Um, just real quick. I just got to mention that you just get out and vote people. You know, this has been a tough year as it, as it was regarding political conversation. Um, and again, you know, everybody wants to spin all these tragedies on Donald Trump. It's not Donald Trump. Again, we, we talked about this beginning show and I just want to say this as we close out mental health is a, is a real serious issue here. In this, in, around the world, not just this country, but around the world. And first of all, we need to recognize mental health problems, and we need to address it. Stop, stop hiding it. Stop trying to fix it on your own. If you feel a family member or somebody is suffering from something, you know, if you can get them to the help, try to get them to the help. I've heard people that have fought court systems to get their families the help they need, so we don't have tragedies such as what we've witnessed this past week and over this last year. Um, so I don't know if you want to add anything real quick to that. Yeah, spirit. real quick. I agree with everything you said, mental health and otherwise, but also the importance of voting. I mean, that's what makes a democracy what it is. And if you don't exercise your right to vote, 
then you're, you're not fulfilling a big responsibility of being a citizen. However, the biggest thing is there is make sure you're an informed voter. You know, I have friends yes. who vote for a, an array of candidates, not always the same as I vote for, but we respect each other because we're all informed. We know why we're voting for the candidates we support, and we know why we're opposed <clears throat> to certain other candidates. So whoever you vote for, go ahead and do that, but make sure you know why. Don't, don't believe yes. what you see on television. Read a little something. Uh, and really make sure that you're voting for the person that reflects the views that you believe are the right way for your community or for the country. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I know, and I know there was an election going on here, and someone was taking credit for something that was done because the city had received grant money. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't take credit for that. This was received by grant. This was done because of grant money. You have absolutely nothing to do with what was done here. So, people, be informed. Know what's going on in your community because that does happen. People do take credit for things that they had absolutely nothing to do with it, and it happens all the time. So, like he said, our squared said, be informed, know what you need to know. Other than that, I gotta thank John David for taking time out of his rehearsal and calling in. That's that's I love that. I love when guys like John David and, and MMA fighters and stuff they take their time out. I'm just a guy, I'm not nobody important, I'm just this guy. But I, I'm blessed to have people who, if I reach out, they, they reach right out to me and they do things such as that. And, um, again, November 17th is the show. And all I got to say is, is, hey, SpongeBob, do me a favor. Well, see you next Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in to the booth at com. Please make sure to tune in for more booth next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. Become a fan on their Facebook page and check out their podcast on iTunes. The Booth is hosted by Sinister One, Z-Man, and Ken Diesel. I've got to start hanging out with friends that are a little more intelligent and understand politics and stuff. It's just that I'm up on this level up here and all my friends are down here. Me, meow. You guys, meow. Maybe a little more down, down here. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Yeah.